this video is uh, learning how to instill a nasogastric tube or a NG tube into our patient. So we have an order that states that we are to put to insert a nasogastric tube. Nasogastric tube just looks like this, okay? Every facility is going to be different. Some may be, you know, different packaging, but they're all going to be the same. Um, and this is what the NG tube is going to look like. All right, as you can see, it's quite lengthy. And this is the end that will be inserted into the patient. As you can see, there's multiple holes uh, within it. Uh, this allows us to suction out uh, from, their, from their gastric passage, okay? Um, this is the actual tube itself. This is just a connection that can connect up to uh, uh, our uh, wall-mounted suction. This is what I was trying to show you earlier with our uh, in the other um, video on how to connect the suctioning uh, to whatever other implement that we're trying to use. This would have fit right onto that um, sputum trap and it would have fit right in there nicely. So this is how you connect uh, the nasogastric tube to wall suction. This is an airport Okay, not like a plane airport, but an airport. And this allows, uh, with any suctioning, you need to have air as well. So this allows air in there. Um, and this just is a cap on there. Um, and then this also will fit into here. Uh, let's say that um, we just are to insert a nasogastric tube and have it for med purposes. Um, then we would instill the meds, and I'll show you how to do that, and then we would cap it, and that's how you cap it, okay? So this is how it's going to come in the package, all right? So we have an order to uh, insert a nasogastric tube, and you're going, wow, how much of this do I put in my patient? That's a lot. Well, as you can see, first of all, there's black markings on it. Okay, so those are going to be important as we continue to insert. Okay, so how do you know how much to put in? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go from the tip of the nose to the tip of the earlobe. So tip of the nose to the, to the earlobe. Okay, from the earlobe, we're going to go down to the epigastric area. So you want to feel for that and you're going to go down to the epigastric area. So that's the length, right? So we want to go to the black mark past our fingers. So this is where my fingers are. We don't go up to this black mark. We go down to this black mark. So this is how far we're going to insert this into our patient. Okay, and that's how you know how much to put into your patient, okay? That's how you measure it. So we want to go down to this mark. You can take a piece of tape and mark that if you would like. Or if you just can remember, we're going to go down to the second black. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do that, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Okay, a lot of people will mark it with a piece of tape. Some people will just remember to go to that black. Again, you're putting this into somebody's nose. Think about that going into your own nose. Are you, is that gonna be comfortable? No, it's not. So we wanna lubricate it. We wanna make it as comfortable as possible for the patient. Is it gonna be comfortable? No. Um, I don't know too many patients that have jumped for joy when I've told them I need to put an NG tube in, okay? Uh, they're kind of uh, not wanting this. I know I wouldn't want it, so. All right. And what we want to do is we want to put a chucks down because we want to keep our area clean. This is not a sterile procedure. Your nose is not sterile, people, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to lubricate the end of this. Again, I'm not going to do it because I'm inserting into a mannequin. and It's too much of a mess to clean up. So you're going to lubricate this. You're going to lubricate it all the way, okay? Because it doesn't matter um, if there's a, a bunch of goop on there because it's going to um, lubricate that n nasal passage really well for us. And what you're going to do is you're going to have the head of the bed up. And I got to find which button that is, peeps. There we go. If your patient is not able to help you um, 
and by help you I mean when you're inserting this and you're finding it uh, where the patient may be gagging or um, having difficulty letting this pass you could actually have them drink some some nice water as you're uh, inserting this so if they're not able to help you hold this um, you would have another person hold this water for you okay and what you want to do is you want to lubricate it bend their head chin to the chest as much as possible okay opens up that passage in there right and we're going to insert sometimes we have to turn and twist the NG to make sure that it's going into the patient we're going to do this until we either hit resistance and we want to stop because sometimes it doesn't go down in there right we're going to continue we're going to look to see is it passing the back of the throat sometimes it'll have a tendency to um, clog up in the back of the throat we want to make sure that it's not doing that them sucking is actually going to help that tube go down into the stomach because think about it what are they doing they're they're making that water go into their stomach so if they're making the water go into the stomach they're actually going to make the tube go into the stomach so we're going to continue inserting this all the way and again this is where i hit resistance so I would have them suck, 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 suck. That's what I would be telling them, okay? And you would continue until you hit this part. It obviously doesn't want to do this for my mannequin. <laughs> so um, you wouldn't be sitting here doing this, people, okay? You wouldn't be ramming this in, okay? I was just trying to get it in there for you. Um, it's not going to allow me. So let's just say that we're at that tape mark, okay? This is our tape mark now, okay? Um, what you're going to do is some places will have a neat little NG holder and um, it's uh, a plastic um, clasp that clasps onto your NG and then you tape it um, with the adhesive that's on there and it actually holds that NG in place right here. We don't have that so what are we going to do? We're going to use tape and you can use tape. Okay, and what you do is take a good piece of tape and you can tear that down. Don't tear it all the way, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to put this onto the bridge of the nose like this, okay? And then you're going to wrap these two pieces around the NG and tape it up onto there. And this actually will hold that NG right there in place and it won't move, okay? All right, so now we have this inserted. Now we don't want this pulling on our patient. So um, let's just say that they're sitting up and this gets caught in the bed things. What could happen? See, that could, that could actually hurt our patient. This can cause some, some, some trauma. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So what we want to do is also get another piece of tape. Okay, this one you could actually use the thinner tape. Right at the moment, I don't have the thinner tape, so well, we're going to make thinner tape. There we go. Maybe. Okay, so you want a piece of tape and a pin, just a safety pin. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to put tape around the top of the tube like this tape it onto itself like you were uh, putting it around IV tubing. You take your safety pin, you stick it through the tape, and then you pin it onto the gown. Okay? And what does this do? It, it gives us enough room here that the patient can move. They can move their head back and forth without it pulling. And then it's not getting caught up in the, in the uh, bedding. And it keeps it at a good working level for us too. So there's benefits for us too, guys, not just the patient. Okay, so you notice that I'm wearing gloves through this. Yes, gross, gross, gross. We're dealing with the nose and anything else that might be coming out of this. So we wanna make sure we have our gloves on. We also used a chuck to keep them clean, right? Okay, so that's uh, nasal uh, NG tube insertion. At this point, the doctor would order whether it's too low continuous suction or low intermittent suction, and uh, whoops, and you would 
just connect it to the suction and on the wall. Um, you would control it. You have regular here and you have intermittent, okay? And what you want is you either, if it's low, you're going to put it on regular side and you're going to turn it down to low. Low is green. Now, you want to go probably like 20 millimeters HG. There's a technical term for that. I can't remember what it is right now. So you want to be less than that for a low continuous suction. If the doctor ordered intermittent suction, okay, it's simple. This would be just over on the intermittent, okay? And you would control it, turn that up to a low, so you would have it less than the 20, okay? And then what it does is it comes, it comes on. See how it's coming on? It's suctioning, and then it'll shut off. So it's not constantly sucking out the gastric juices in our patient. Um, with this, with an NG tube to suction, we have to be concerned with sucking out um, all of the bio within their body, which also um, sucks out all of the necessary um, minerals and vitamins and, and enzymes that our body needs. So we have to be careful with potassium levels uh, when, we are, when we have an NG tube to suction, okay? So that's why we don't normally have it on a continuous suction. It's normally an intermittent suction. And I forget how many seconds it goes on and it goes off, it goes on, it goes off. Um, so you just have to monitor that, okay? So that's how you connect it up to suction. Now, you're saying, hmm, how do I do medications for my patient um, with an NG tube? Well, think about it. You can't put an NG tube, you can't put a pill down that NG tube, right? Because it's going to become stuck, okay? So what you want to do is you either, you want to take your pill crusher Okay, you're going to put your pill in here, you're going to crush it up to a fine powder, okay, give it a good couple of things, you're going to shake that powder into your cup, okay, and then you're going to use sterile water, not, not this guys, okay, not sodium chloride. You don't want normal saline when you're doing this because what are we doing? We're throwing off their their balance within their body because I mean saline is saline. That's salt. Salt is required within the body but we don't have an order to do that. So we want to make sure that we use sterile water when we're doing this, okay? Then again, some facilities allow you to use tap water because if this patient was not sick would they be drinking tap water at home? You betcha, they would. So per facility policy, you have to, you know, find out do they allow us to put sterile water or is it tap water that they want us to use? Here, we're going to um, use, this is sterile water. This is not saline, guys, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to make a slurry. This is called a slurry. And you just put, f you put enough fluid in there to help you assist uh, with getting this um, down the NG tube. You would take a straw, if that's what you had, a spoon, you would mix it up, okay? And now the medication is ready to go down the NG tube. Um, how do you get it into this little thing? Well, there's just no way that we're gonna literally pour it like this. That's not gonna happen, guys, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna have an irrigation tray. And with the irrigation tray comes this um, 60 uh, milliliter syringe. And if you look, it's got a tip on it, okay? And with this, we're just going to pull out the plunger, okay? Because we don't want to push anything into them, right? We want this to actually go in by gradual. So what you're going to do is you're going to unclamp this, okay? You're going to put your tube in. Now, are you going to have enough room to make this go above the nose? No. So what you need to do is you need to disconnect this pin from the gown because we want to be able to, when we instill this uh, medicine into the person, is to hold it above the, the uh, nose, okay? I'm not going to instill this into this mannequin because um, it's 
I don't have a stomach in him, okay? Um, and it will just go in there and it would ruin my mannequin. So we're not gonna do that. Um, but what we would do is literally, we would take and fill, uh, put some sterile water into our tube. Why do we do that with, uh, before we do the medicine? Because we wanna first of all, uh, flush the tube, and second of all, check to see if it's actually doing it. But before we do that, oh, I almost forgot a really, really, really important step. Okay, so we have, stay right here, I'll just talk. Um, so we have the NG tube in, and how do we know that it's actually in the stomach? Oh, we gotta know that, right? Right, because we don't want this, because where could this NG tube be going? This NG tube can go either into the stomach or into the lungs. Do we want to put water into our patient's lungs? Oh, no, 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 no. So we want to make sure that this NG tube is actually in the stomach. How do we do that? We use the syringe, just like we would with instill in medications. We're going to put the plunger all the way at the end, put this on the NG with our stethoscope, in our ears, we're going to listen to that epigastric area, okay, and we're going to flush and just take some maneuvering, people. We're going to push all this air into our patient. And when we do that, we should hear gurgling in our stethoscope from the epigastric area, and that's telling us that, oh, we actually are in the stomach because we put air into our stomach, okay? If you don't hear that, then you may want to readjust your NG tube and check again, okay? Um, some facilities require you to uh, check it by, um, ec uh, by an x-ray. So you may have to get an x-ray to make sure that it actually is within the stomach, okay? So we've instilled um, air in. It is in the um, epigastric area. Um, if you, when you take this out from instilling the air, you're going to hear blah, 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 blah. They're burping. You just, they're burping out all that air you just put in them, okay? So what we're doing is taking the plunger out, and then now we can put in our medicine, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put our sterile water in. Make sure that you pay attention to how much fluid you're putting in because that's intake, right, people? If they were drinking, they would be drinking this amount. So we need to make sure that we know how many milliliters we're putting in them, okay? We're going to hold it above the head, above the nose, and you're going to see the fluid by gravity go into the patient, okay? When it does that freely, then you know, okay, it's flushed, and I can instill my medicine. You'd put your medicine in. Again, hold it above, let the medicine go through. You may have residue within the container, so it's always good. It's a good habit to flush this again. You flush, and, and it goes through. Okay, so now it's you've instilled your medication. You paid attention to how many milliliters of fluid you put in, and then you would cap this, just like this. You cap this, like that, okay? And then... Um, you would, again, pin this to your patient's gown. We have now just instilled medication into our patient, okay? We're going to leave that alone, and we're going to go on to our next video.